in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed but then, like I told us, there are two dimensions. The believer has the privilege of manifesting or relating with two realms. The realm of the spirit and this physical realm. So the things and the realities that are finished in the realm of the spirit, as real and as truthful as they are, they do the believer no good remaining in the realm of the spirit. Are we together now? This is the realm where our light must shine before men. This is the realm where they want to glow. Our lives must become manifestations of the glory of God. According to Ephesians 3 and verse 10, to the intent now that unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church, the multifaceted wisdom, the manifold wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2.10 says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained, preordained, that we should walk in them results are very important for the believers work first as a consolation for your loving and serving Jesus but then that becomes the consolation and it becomes the evidence that serving the Lord pays in the Christian experience of serving the Lord you can taste and see that the Lord is good not just believe and hope there is experience to our work with God are we together now so the Bible says, God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But it's important for you to understand that your desires and your promises need to be made manifest here and now. For your profiting and then to be able to reveal Christ in and through you. And generally speaking, to save time, there are three kinds of knowledge you must have. To be able to manifest promises and desires i'll just state them then construct the keys that make the promises of god manifest generally speaking there are three kinds three levels of knowledge that all believers must contend for by the word and by the spirit if we desire to see our faith potent enough to obtain promises number one is the knowledge of god himself the first kind of knowledge you need for your excelling is not the knowledge of things. It is the knowledge of God. The Bible says, but the people, Daniel 11:32, that do know their God, not just that do know what he can do, not just that do know what he has, the people that do know their God, the Bible says they shall be strong, capacity. Number two, they shall do exploits. Not explain exploits, do exploits. Are we together now? So the Bible says that it is important that we know God. In fact, the real heritage of the believer is not material things as important as they are. The Bible says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. It says, let not the rich man glory in his riches. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. The Bible says, but let him that glory a glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. John 17 and verse 3. This is eternal life, that they may know thee, the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. So the first dimension of knowledge that all believers need if you must manifest Bible faith is the knowledge of God. And with respect to faith, there are two dimensions of God that you must understand. Number one, his integrity. Number two, his ability. These are the dimensions of God that control conviction. You must know that God is a God of integrity. There are many daring things God will instruct you to do in your life as a believer. And you will draw your confidence from your knowledge of his integrity. 
The word integrity is from the word integer, sameness, without falsehood. Are we together now? The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Men don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. God is not a man. He became a man, but he is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Are we together now? The Bible says by these two immutable things, the oath and the promise, that by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. Do you understand what I'm teaching you so far? It's important that your faith is anchored on the person, the integrity of God. And then number two, his ability. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 now. Now unto him, the Bible says, who is able to do. I like this. Able to do. There are people who are able to say, but they are not able to do. There are people who are well-intentioned, but they are not able to do. The ability to do is a description of your wherewithal able to do exceeding abundant the bible says far above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us say god has integrity one more time say god has integrity and then say god is almighty it is true you want to walk in bible faith you must have a revelation of god's integrity and God's ability because you will stand before many Red Seas you will stand before many Goliaths and listen to me sincerely ladies and gentlemen it will take the faith of the Son of God at work in you to see his might beyond the mountains to see his might beyond the Giants when David stood before Goliath he saw a reality beyond Goliath and Goliath was no longer a threat are we together and you know the way God speaks to man he speaks to man as though he's speaking to himself. When God is speaking to you, he does not speak as though there should be any limitations as far as obeying him is concerned. Because it is his power that will sponsor that word coming to pass. So God will give you audacious instructions and act as if there will not be mountains on the way. Go and build the 10, 20, 30,000 member auditorium for instance and that's the end of it. And he will act as if he kept money somewhere for you. Because he really did. Go to Zarephath, he says. I have commanded a widow. She never acted like she was commanded. Why are you here? And God said, I've commanded her already. And when he met the woman, the woman was about to eat and die. There was nothing that sounded like an instruction came to her. And yet God said, I've commanded her. God is not a man that he should lie. Do you believe this? So the Bible tells us that God has integrity. And watch this. The entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is a compendium, a manifesto of God's integrity to the end that the saints will believe him. When you study scripture, among the many things you seek to see is God's integrity walking with men in the storm, walking with men through unfavorable situations. The Bible says the things that are written aforetime, they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. Are we together? The thing that is, is the thing that was. There is no challenge to the believer today that is new. It's happened before. And the Bible says, time will fail me to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions, obtained promises. You're not the first to desire building the house. You're not the first to be managing a health condition. It's happened before and the integrity of God has been put on display. Even the dead and the grave, even Hades could not stop his integrity from being made manifest. Are we together now? So most people want to walk in Bible faith and um, now I, I say this sincerely. There are many people who may never truly experience the power of God as far as manifesting faith is concerned because their speakings and the things that they do is not derived from the revelation of who God is. The difference between mental ascent, just talking gibberish, and the confession that produces power is that the latter is a derivative 
of an encounter. You need to know God. Are we together now? Yes. You need to know God. And one of the things that happens to you when you know God is that your perceptions are altered. When you see him in his majesty and in his might, something happens to you. It deflates the mountains and the challenges that are before you because when you see him in his power, you can believe him for anything. Shout a loud amen. amen. So the first kind of knowledge that you need is the knowledge of God. Can I tell you, there are many believers who do not want to pay the price to build that bank of knowledge. It is important. The God you know is the one you reveal to your world. When God was sending Moses to Pharaoh, Moses, God, Moses said, no, 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 no. God, this is inconsistent with your pattern. You cannot send me to go and represent a God I do not understand. If I meet Pharaoh, who will I tell him has sent me? I do not doubt what you are saying, but who will I tell Pharaoh had sent me? And he said, that's a good question. I am that I am. Let me give you a revelation of myself. And upon that confidence, Moses could dare Pharaoh and he stood coming once and again until that exodus happened. Many of us would need to go back and submit ourselves by the spirit and through the word to learn God afresh, understand the stretch of his integrity and understand how powerful God is. Second knowledge. The second dimension of knowledge you need to manifest Bible faith is the knowledge of the promises that have been made available for you in Christ. The Zoe life manifesting it is highly knowledge dependent. In ignorance, the believer will live a defeated life. In ignorance, the believer will live a defeated life. If knowledge were not important, God would not grant us access to his word. If knowledge were not important, the Holy Spirit will have no ministry in our lives. The Bible says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Is that true? He's the spirit of revelation. He guides men, guides our understanding. Light is powerful. John 1, 5. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Arise, he says, shine, for your light has come. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. Hallelujah. This is very important. Most believers live defeated lives because we have not paid the price, number one, to truly know God. Experientially. Hallelujah. And then number two, we are not even aware of the exceeding great and precious promises. I charged us in the morning when we were discussing on prayer. It is important for you to know what is available. This is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it come into the heart of any man. The things that God has in store, not for everybody, prepared for them that love him. Verse 10 says, but the God has revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searched all things the deep things of God even those things that have been hidden and the Bible says for our glory knowledge what do you know about God what do you know about victory what do you know about failure what do you know about Satan what do you know about the blessing of the Lord what do you know about restoration what do you know about speed what do you know about prayer? What do you know about fasting? What do you know and believe about demons? What do you know and believe about angels? What do you know and believe about heaven? What do you know and believe about unity? What do you believe about prayer? What do you believe about coming to church? Are we together? It's important to begin to vet, to probe, and to examine your understanding. Stability in this kingdom is a function of knowledge, experiential knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, the prophet lamenting by the spirit said, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. My people, they are my people and yet they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. 
make up your mind this year that you are going to contend for superior spiritual information you must begin to vet your understanding are you aware of what is available unto you in christ this is the ministry of the word this is the ministry of the holy spirit hallelujah i can do all things he says you know um for many years i studied that scripture and one day god opened my eyes how does paul make such a very audacious and arrogant statement how do you dare say i can do all things do you know how many things to be done in your life and yet he says i can do all things if he stopped there he will be charged for arrogance but then he says through christ which strengtheneth me is the word energies there is an energy that comes from the spirit beyond myself are we learning now the knowledge of god and then the knowledge of the promises i taught you in the morning if you recall that or oh, I, I didn't explain that part that the bible essentially every time you open the bible to study you are interacting with three realms of spiritual realities number one promises promises a compendium of god's commitment to you number two principles that help to educate you and show you the modus operandi of the kingdom number three the prophetic speakings of god both past and future every time you study scripture this is what you are looking at you are interacting with number one i repeat promises exceeding great and precious promises the bible says there are many things that god has said concerning us he says you are the head and not the tail do you believe that he spoke to abraham that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed and the bible says in galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 he says if ye be christ then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise that means what he said to abraham he said to abraham and christ jesus and now in him by redemption we have become partakers of his divine nature that includes what he told abraham so you carry a consciousness that you are a blessing are we together now this is very important the bible says when men say there is a casting down for you you will say there is a lifting up is a consciousness you must believe it let the redeemed of the lord say so let the healed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so the bible says in deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 that in obeying the lord and walking in keeping with his commands you shall be exalted above all the nations say all any nation whatsoever the color of your skin notwithstanding the limitations of your background like Gideon notwithstanding it is already God's prophetic speakings it is up to you to know and then to believe you cannot believe in ignorance it starts with knowledge then it translates to believing many believers must submit themselves to superior spiritual knowledge can I give you the third kind of knowledge you need to know if you must manifest bible faith the third kind of knowledge you need to know and this one many believers including those who teach faith with all due respect have not understood it the knowledge of the conditions that are connected to the manifestation of every promise the knowledge of the conditions that are connected to the manifestation of every promise the knowledge of the conditions that are connected to the manifestation of every promise responsible christianity is when you bring the saints to an understanding that the technology that makes anything manifest in the earth is that the spirit and the bride say come it is the union between the spirit and the responsibility of the bride that makes manifest are we together now when jesus was about to be made manifest as the word incarnate it took a role from man and then from god the angel had to come to mary sent from god how shall these things be she said seeing that i know not a man he says the holy ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you and she said be it unto me she had to agree to participate with heaven to make that manifest there are many believers with all due respect claiming things they will never see because there is a responsibility component to faith 
Did you hear what I said? There is a responsibility component to faith. They heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. In fact, the Bible calls Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. That means he's the pattern man as far as God's idea of faith is concerned. So you understudy how Jesus manifested faith and that vetoes how any other person manifested faith. We see the responsibility component of birthing the purposes of God in and through the life of Jesus. Are we together? He said, lo, I come. Um, you know, Paul was making reference to that which was speaking. The Bible says he went to the temple and he opened and found where it was written concerning him. It was not open for him. He opened it himself. He read it and said, this day is this scripture fulfilled. Hallelujah. Every dimension of possibility and reality in the spirit, watch this now please, it has a responsibility component that it places on the saints. Now there are many dimensions of grace. Grace is multifaceted. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 that God is able to make all grace. Everybody say all grace. Say all grace. That means grace is dimensional. There are certain dimensions of grace that are called enabling grace. God does not do it for you. He empowers you, but the doing comes from you. The enablement comes from the spirit. Are we together now? But the action of obedience comes from you. This is very important. So there are many people, for instance, who are sincerely claiming, let me use something that probably has affected many people across Africa. The issue of finances, for instance. Now the truth is that the Bible tells us that he know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 that ye through his poverty might become rich. Most believers know that. Are we together? That the blessing is at work in their lives. They know that and that is true but they are never able to manifest that reality. You know why? Because there are components in the kingdom that connect. There are responsibility components. For instance, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. For instance, a diligent hand shall be made fat. Is that true? That the man who does not plant will beg in harvest. These are components you must piece together. It is important that you do not just know God alone. You do not just know the promises. You must understand the conditions that are connected to the manifestation of the promise. When it has to do with walking in the experience of healing, number one, you must believe that your healing is finished in Christ. But number two, you must believe that to walk in the experience of it, there is always the hearing of faith. The healing of the saints in experience or the manifestation of it is always connected to the hearing of faith. Everyone who was healed had to listen and in listening there was an instruction and they were mandated to obey at the point of obedience. You see that now. The miracle manifested. John 2. The wedding in Cana of Galilee. The ten lepers. You know, Peter's mother-in-law, and you read it all down to the book of Acts. The hearing of faith connected to the manifestation of healing. Are we learning? So many believers know they've taken out time to know God in a measure. Others have taken out time to just, just know a few provisions that are available for them in Christ. But there are very few believers who are willing to, number one, even believe in the first place that there is a responsibility component to faith. James said, show me your faith without works. And he says, I will show you my faith by my works. He says, there remained a rest for God's people and the church is labor to enter that rest. How do you labor? In word and in doctrine. And then you are able to derive what you need to do. The rich young ruler came and met Jesus and he said, good master, what must I do to be saved? You know why Jesus commended him? Because even though salvation from sin is without the works, the participation of any man yours is to believe but because the man had a mentality that for anything to happen in my life I must take responsibility and he said good master what must I do to be saved 
Hallelujah. You as pastor, by the grace of God, we know that this was a great program, mighty program. And you can see that this is a manifestation of faith, but not without the responsibility participation of the saints. How about those who woke up in the morning to make this place work? They, you did not sign any paper and convince them that you were coming. They believed God was bringing you, so they took steps of faith to begin to prepare the chairs before your arrival. They didn't wait for you to arrive before they start putting the chairs to say, let's verify. Mo listen, listen. This is the missing link. And this also explains the secret frustration of many people who attempt to walk in faith. They have ignored the knowledge of the conditions. Hallelujah. As a man of God, I believe in the grace of God. I believe in his empowerment. But ladies and gentlemen, like every man of God here seated, there are hours that have gone into the labor of the study of the word. Are we together now? What you see is a display of the grace of God enhanced by diligence and competence and even mastery. You believe what I'm saying? Yes. So there, there is a level of irresponsibility that God wants to take away as far as manifesting faith. Hoping and waiting for God to do everything as far as making it manifest here looks sincere, but it is not accurate. That is not how faith works. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain, but that reality could not save man, even though it was finished already. Jesus had to come and walk for 30 years, learning the law, submitting himself through schoolmasters. Are we together now? Resisting every temptation that came, tempted in all ways, yet without sin gave himself willingly in fact jesus himself you know i like the bible because it says everything jesus the author and the finisher of your faith he got to a point where he sincerely admitted that this journey was difficult and he's still the author and the finisher of faith is it is it not in your bible if if it be thy will let this cup pass off me he said it but he said nevertheless my desire to see God's purposes come is greater than my need or my pain. That is faith. Faith exalts the word of God above and beyond the situation, not necessarily ignoring the reality of the situation. Are, are we learning now? This is very important. There are many believers today with all due respect, they wouldn't have died if they understood the responsibility component of faith. While they were trusting God to be healed, knowing that faith is a school, they would have opened up themselves to be attended to medically while building themselves to learn the ways of God. Because the journey of the believer is gradual, it is progressive. There is no embarrassment, we are evolving. The Bible says, as we behold him, we are changed. It's not instant, the experience is gradual. It takes a while to gain mastery in spiritual things. I am an advocate of responsible Christianity. Not that which dampens God's ability. When you become carnally minded, you are already defeated. Because the Bible says to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded, it says, is life and peace. I understand that if it must happen God's way in my life, I must come with the consciousness that that reality is available in Christ. But I engage with understanding taking advantage of the word of God the grace of God to engage responsibly are we together so the man who gets up to go and get a job so that he will pay his children's school fees is the one who believes in the children's future not the one who sits down waiting for things to happen that he believed in the children's future and he got up by faith believing and while he's going there he's confessing the blessing of the lord is at work in my life in the name of jesus christ the favor of god is at work in me manifesting me and yet he's taking his cv and he's dropping it regardless the embarrassment and the number of no's that he hears he still continues are we learning this is important There are many times if you understand the conditions that are connected to the things that are ailing you. Do you know the Bible tells us that there are many ways that God brings men into this experience of the Zoe life. 
one of it is through the advantage of the gifts that he has placed in the body that no matter the strength of your relationship with God you will still need the leverage of the gifts the gifts are men that he gave to men to enhance their becoming in the kingdom there are many things you can pray and fast about the answer is hidden in your honor to men are we together that even if you are Paul as Saul and you encounter Jesus, he will still refer you to men after the encounter for the continuity of your growth. So not even an encounter with Jesus will corrupt that pattern. Are we learning faith now? Yes. The knowledge of God, his character, his integrity, the knowledge of the promises of the kingdom, my goodness, my life changed when I came into this understanding. It is important for you to know what is written. It is important for you to know what is written concerning you, concerning your finances, concerning your children. When you know what is written, you can partner with the spirit to enforce it by faith. In ignorance, there is no victory for the believer. In ignorance, there is no victory for the believer. Are we together? We must take responsibility to begin to study scripture and have superior spiritual illumination this is why you must honor every man of god that god places around your life beginning from your pastor you know why because according to jeremiah 3 and verse 15 men and women of god have a unique mandate as pastors after god's heart to feed god's people with knowledge and understanding week after week in this conference now speaker after speaker people have come here dishing out different dimensions of spiritual reality to the end that the saints be established you want to move mountains i hate to be a bearer of bad news but there are certain assumptions in that process that if you don't go out of that mountain will remain there it's true like it has remained for many people time does not move mountains good intention does not move mountains it is engaging the force of faith with understanding faith indeed that moves mountains every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Can I tell you, with all humility, there are many dimensions in the spirit that I am walking in the experience of now. I saw them in my visions decades ago, but seeing them as realities, this has been prepared in the aeons of time in the spirit it is part of the script for my destiny but whether i would walk in the experience of it or not was dependent among other factors on the responsibility component of faith there are many many people today it is in their destiny to be great there are many people in the spirit they are prophets in the physical they are weak people moving around in jealousy and envy with no trace of power because they have not come into an understanding that genuine faith demands a responsibility component when you act in partnership with God, you are not replacing the reality of his finished work. You are partnering with him to birth that reality within your domain. Are we together? Yes. I remember those days when I would have visions of crusades, mighty meetings and healings happening. In the physical, it never happened. I believe what I saw from scripture in partnership with my vision but it never made manifest it was never made manifest and i took the responsibility by faith listening there are two ways to gain the things that god has spoken to you concerning number one you follow them is one of the first principles of followership follow them there are some them who through faith and patience before you follow them verify whether there is faith and patience in their journey if you do not find it don't follow follow them who through faith and patience that means there are other routes but the route that leads you to destiny god's way is the route of faith and patience then the second is looking onto jesus there are two people or two entities you must look onto one men who have proven rec uh, track records and then the second jesus himself the author and the finisher of our faith 
I remember studying the materials of Papa Hagen, T.L. Osborne, Charles and Francis Hunter. I devote those materials praying and fasting sincerely. I didn't pray and fast because I was doubting that the healing anointing could, was in my destiny. It is to make it manifest. So for every time I was laboring in the spirit, there was a record in the spirit that I was manifesting faith, believing God. Today, some of those things that we saw by God's grace are now made manifest. And yet there are many others that are yet to manifest. So we must continue walking by the same rule. And eventually, because God is not a man that he should lie. And can I tell you with all due respect, there were many people who saw the same things we saw. But they made blind faith assumptions that it will happen anyway. Until today, they are at the lower levels of life in pain. It will never work when you believe it is all up to God. No, the cheapest of everything we have received in Christ is salvation. And even at that, you still have a responsibility to confess the Lordship of Jesus. As simple as that is, there are people in hell today because they ignored it. It will always demand action of obedience. Is someone learning now? If there is one final component I give you before we wrap up tonight, I hope God has spoken to someone. There is one missing component again to our faith equation that many believers have not paid attention to. It's called the staying power. There are times you have done everything. The only thing left is thanksgiving and patience. Are we together? Let me just give us that my time is up and then we will pray. Thanksgiving and patience. This is very important. Romans chapter 4 and verse 20, the Bible speaks to us about Abraham, who is one of the principal portraits of faith as revealed in scripture. Please give it to us, Romans 4. The Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. How did he prove that he was strong in faith? Giving glory, giving thanks. How do you prove that you are strong in faith? Giving thanks, even when you have not seen it. Lord, I thank you. I give you praise because this is still my reality. In the midst of everything around, negating your report, I choose to believe your report and I give you thanks. There are many of us, you've done everything right. What you need to do now is just to give thanks. You wake up in the morning, you give thanks. In the midst of the confusion, you give thanks. You give thanks because you believe. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 says, so after he had waited patiently, the he being Abraham, the Bible says he patiently endured. Are you seeing it there? Abraham, the personification of God's idea of faith. The Bible says he patiently endured. He obtained the promise. Between God said, and it manifested, it's many times it would demand patience. It's called the patience of faith. When a woman takes in, no matter how healthy she is, she will not give birth the next day. Except it's a miracle that God chooses to do by his divine power. Are we together? But the natural cause of things is that when she takes in, she's aware of the fact that she's taking in, but the next assignment is to patiently endure. Patiently endure. It will change her mood, she will patiently endure. Many things in her life will have to shift, she will have to adapt to many things within that period, but she will patiently endure. There is a time allocated for that baby to be matured in her womb, and she has to wait. And when it is that time, she will give birth with honor. There are times it can happen before, it can happen after. But the most important thing is that she will patiently endure. I'm speaking to someone as I wrap up. There are many of you here, you are in a realm where you just need to patiently endure. You have given, you are diligent, you are building a track record. I refer you to my teaching yesterday. After the report is established, after the testimonial is in place, I assure you God is faithful and it will come. And can I tell you, is the period of manifesting faith that takes time. The arrival of the promise sometimes can happen overnight. So Joseph patiently endured. Watch this now, I'm wrapping up. Having had the dream, I saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing. After that kind of powerful dream, you would think the answer will come next week. If I were Joseph, I probably would be preparing for the throne by next week. My goodness. Many decades later, from that dream, the next place he went to was the pit. The next place he went to was Potiphar's house. 
and you will think things were already getting better Potiphar's wife now came with her trouble where did it land him prison again and yet his joy he would laugh and also watch the countenance of others in the prison a night before his lifting he never knew his season had come to an end and my Bible says the king sent for Joseph God himself the one who governs times and seasons the Bible says he makes all things beautiful in its time not his time its time there are things in life that have a timing to them hallelujah praise the name of the Lord the faith that moves mountains is derived from number one your knowledge of God number two your knowledge of the promises God's commitment towards you and then number three the knowledge of the conditions it is only when you understand the conditions that you can obey you cannot obey in ignorance are we together yes knowledge precedes obedience the obedience of faith at the point where your obedience is complete then all that is left is patience and thanksgiving those we celebrate today in the church the fathers of faith across the globe the fathers of faith within this nation mighty men and women in business captains of industry when they are honest with you and you listen to their stories you will find this pattern consistent number one God altered their belief they had to understand something and believe a reality that it is finished even for those who are not believers they had to believe in themselves instinctively to believe that that possibility exists in their destiny they would tell you right from when I was a small child I knew I was going to be great and there was nothing else they would be told that they would believe otherwise and from that standpoint they began to journey with God I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching